you and I had the hypothesis that dropping LDL levels by more would be better. We're almost to the point where we can get cholesterol levels down to safe levels in almost anybody. What do you think the main inflection points as you reflect back on those years? Well, I do think that the understanding, and it's something that you and I worked together on uh, very early on, the lower you can reduce LDL cholesterol, the bad cholesterol, um, the lower the incidence of stroke, heart attack, and cardiac death. And this concept that lower is better has evolved and evolved from, you know, what we thought was a normal cholesterol. And so we're almost to the point where we can get cholesterol levels down to safe levels in almost anybody. And we didn't have any of this when I started out my career. Mm -hmm. When we were on the, I would have to say the radical fringe, you and I had the hypothesis that dropping LDL levels by more would be better. And there was a lot of pushback. I mean, I can remember from the scientific community, there was a lot of pushback. And, you know, I had been involved in developing intravascular ultrasound, the technique where you have a, a, a sound wave probe on the tip of a catheter and you can put it inside the coronary arteries and you can measure how much plaque is there. And you and your, your former employer uh, were, uh, you know, interested in this. And so we came together. And this is, of course, what... Is, has made so much progress is this academic industry collaboration where we work together to solve problems. And so we designed a study that looked at intensive LDL lowering with a pretty powerful statin and more moderate lowering. But when we were done, the results were very dramatic. The people that got a moderate statin and moderate LDL lowering their disease progressed, they had more plaque at the end of 18 months. And the people that we treated more intensively had no progression of their plaque. And uh, that got a lot of attention. It was a very, very uh, important study and it paved the way for a long series of studies on the effectiveness of lowering cholesterol levels to lower and lower and lower levels. Yeah, I remember those times, Steve, when we were working together. It was great at the time because it was controversial whether high intensity statins would actually be able to decrease your um, effects on cardiovascular disease. So we've seen significant advancements. We have indeed. Fast forward now 10, 15 years, and we talked about the tools that are available to the physicians as well as to the patients. Obviously, we talked about statins. What do you foresee in the future in terms of continuing that trend down in terms of decreasing cardiovascular risk? There is something about this that I really want to say. We have powerful drugs, but they don't work if you don't take them. And studies had shown that by the end of a year after we started a statin, up to half of the people had stopped taking the drug. So the problem is adherence. You know, you don't feel sick. High cholesterol doesn't make you feel bad. It just has these terrible consequences. So people say, oh, I feel okay, I'll stop the drugs. And we fought to try to get that, that level of non-adherence down. You and I both know cardiovascular disease is also known as the silent killer because there are no symptoms for many patients. And after being on statins for six months, nine months, the patients say, well, I'm not feeling anything. So they don't go to their pharmacy or go uh, follow up with their physicians to get the refills on their prescriptions. So it is a real concern in terms of adherence, uh, making sure that we control the cholesterol, as you said. <music> 